right, uh, let me go over the Magic Linear Regression Channel Indicator for TradingView. Uh, first step is how do you search for it? Um, let's see, you see it on my screen now, so let's, uh, let's take it off. Remove this, this, and this. And we're going to go to the indicator search, type in magic, and then look for Magic Linear Regression Channel MW by MWrite Inc. So I'm going to add that in there. And what you want to do is look for these blue indicators that says uh, start time or set the start time. You're going to set the start time at a pivot, maybe a pivot low or a pivot high. So I'm going to pick this low over here to start. And then the next prompt is set the end time. So I'm going to pick a, a next the next pivot low. Uh, let's say let's say here for the end time. And there we have our magic linear regression channel. And you'll see that it will automatically find the largest deviations and create the lines based on those, or uh, create the bands based on those. And I typically like to use pivots because they symbolize a full wave of price movement. So you go in from the bottom of the wave to the top of the wave and then back to the bottom of the wave. If you use that entire wave, then it tends to give you something that's a, a little bit more predictable. And the great thing is that if you get it wrong or in real time, you can move that around. So say I wanted to choose this pivot low then you'll get a, a, a completely different uh, linear channel based on the data between the start and the end time. And then it'll project past uh, showing you what the data would be like or is expected to be like if it uh, continues along that channel. And we can extend that channel. Uh, right now it's extended uh, in uh, 10 bars or 10 candlesticks. So let's extend it 30. So I'll extend that 30, select OK. And so we can see that this channel was largely respected until about right here. But we also have another feature that allows you to add an outer Fibonacci band. So it will use a, a 1.618 factor uh, as compared to the the distance between the baseline and the outer band. So if this is 1, 1 1.618 would be the next band. So I'm going to add that. And what you'll see is that this part where it actually went out of the first band, it actually respected the Fibonacci band. And then went back up to the baseline and then had a very recognizable break of that channel. And that's called a, a change of character where now your your lower lows are, are starting to appear. Let's see. and let's see. You can also add inner Fibonacci bands. I have one called the inner Fibonacci band lower and uh, and uh, inner Fibonacci band upper. And what those do, let's turn off the first one turn off add outer Fibonacci band. We're going to add the inner Fibonacci band upper. And that means it's a 61.8% of the distance between the baseline and the main band. And the, the inner Fibonacci band is a 38.2%. So let's do the 61.8. And so we have a band here. And you can see that was respected a few times. Um, in this band, both at the top and the bottom. And you could also add the uh, a half band, so halfway in between. And you can play around with that. Sometimes the data will respect one or these one or the other more than uh, more than the others. 
So let's go to uh, also uh, the, the baseline mode. So we can go to a mode where all you see is the baseline. So you can see the direction of the trend. That sometimes come in handy when we're dealing with wedges. So when the price is getting, uh, has a smaller and smaller deviation. So let's find, a, let's see if we can find, oh, here we go. So here's a nice wedge being formed from about there at this high. Let's find another pivot high. Let's say right there. So here we have an obvious wedge forming, but is it more of a downtrend or an uptrend? Sometimes it's hard to see, but the band is, or the, uh, the linear regression baseline is red, so it's showing that this was actually a, a downtrend during this period. Uh, it eventually broke up, but you know continued down, and it showed that uh, you know later on that that it was a, a really big downtrend up ahead. Uh, you can also use it just to you know if you if you have data that's very tight. It's a good way to indicate that you know there you, you have a, a meltdown or a melt up occurring. Meltdown or melt up meaning that the price really isn't deviating that much, but it's trending in the same direction. And you can see that, let's say, uh, later on in the day. Uh, let's go over here. Let's go from this pivot high. And this we could pick any of these pivot highs really right. there we go so now you can see that the data is following uh, you know this is a, a definitive uh, downtrend right here so let's add our bands back in so I'm gonna uncheck show baseline only which over overrides all the settings uh, all the other settings And typically the way this would get used is you're looking for a break of channel. So if we start at this pivot low and maybe go to this pivot low, what we're looking for is when this channel is definitively being broken. And that might be a time when you would consider a an exit from a from a, a long position or entry into a short position. So you can, you know, exit your calls and buy some puts or, you know, if you're using futures, you can sell here and uh, to exit a, out of a, a, a buy position or, or enter a new sell position. And sometimes you're uh, looking for a bounce in that channel. So here we've created the channel so this is what has already happened. So we need to use this for future actions. Here you'll see it bounced. Didn't quite make it to the top. It did bounce off of that uh, that upper Fibonacci uh, level. So if we had that uh, inner Fibonacci band upper. So you can see it had some bounces here, here, within this uh, uh, this period that already existed. So in the future, you might look for that to happen again, and here, here you go, three times it hit that upper Fibonacci. Once it hit the uh, the outer band, and so you do you do uh, you do see some bounces, and here's a bounce off the bottom of the band, and here's the exit. There is also a horizontal mode. Where I can draw a horizontal line or force that to be a horizontal line starting at the close. I can have it start at the high, start at the low, or start at the open. So here I have it starting at the low of the period that I selected, of the first candle of the period I selected. Let's see, or did I have it? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I have it starting at the close. Start at close. Yeah, there we go. So it'll draw a horizontal line, and then you can add your Fibonacci levels if you just wanted to see what was going on here. And this might be, uh, you know, if you see that there is an order block, um, 
see I actually have my engulfing patterns turned on. Let me turn those off. So if you see you had a, an, an order block formed or any significant movement that you want to keep track of, you can put that here so the next time it comes to this level, you can make a choice as to whether or not this is becoming support or resistance or whatever. The other great thing about the indicator, I'm going to turn off horizontal, turn off the horizontal line. Okay, and I'm going to reset this to that pivot low. Is that uh, you can set alerts. So whenever there's a break of the channel, you can go to the indicator, you hit these three dots, add alert on magic linear regression channel MW, and then you can give it a name. We'll say we are looking at the MES futures, which is uh, basically SPY, MES futures regression channel break all right so now we've created and created an alert and had we created that alert during uh, when we created this channel this break would have given us an alert and let us know that we are seeing a, def a definitive break of uh, I'm sorry change of character because now we're outside of the channel and you can see that price broke down went back retested the channel and then went down from there one other thing to mention is that I added these these big red and small red dots to indicate um, pivots and higher lows and lower highs so the green ones are lower highs so that's what you would see at the bottom of a channel. Here, here, here. And this is the pivot. This doesn't get formed until we know we've seen a lower high, a higher low. Same thing with the lower highs. We don't see the low, uh, we don't see the major pivots until we see a lower high. So then we can uh, use these as points for where we begin the start. Uh, or will we draw the start and the end of the channel? Uh, another great thing is that you can put as much as many of these on as possible. So if I have this channel that already exists on here, I don't have to keep moving it around. I can just grab another one. Magic uh, typing type by typing in magic magic linear regression channel. I have to set the start time and end time again. So let's set the start time at this pivot and there are no other pivots it just went down so let's find the this was a pivot high so let's find something that seems like a pivot high and then you can see the channel uh, being respected the bottom top bottom top it hit the top again and then just tanked uh, and this is actually, this went out a little bit too far, so let's extend that channel. Extend line in bars, so we're going to extend it to, say, 20. And what you'll see here is that there is a huge break from the bottom of a descending uh, channel, which is, you don't see very often, um, but that's a, a really good sign that you're overextended and what we saw is that there was a big bounce and we broke back above the channel here we could have put in another alert to see when we were going to break this channel we would have gotten an, an alert here and we would have gotten an alert here uh, if we had set our alerts to uh, uh, to go off um, all the time so by that I mean see uh, open-ended alert so there's our expiration um, so it's gonna go on any alert function call all right that's it uh, any questions feel free to post them in the comments uh, please like share and subscribe and you can reach me on TradingView at Mright Inc <laughs>